Deep Down Cleaning, your one-stop cleaning outfit for Deep Down Results. 31-year-old former Bedford resident Chahao Tang joining me here at the, at the LeBron Arena in Bedford, Nova Scotia, where you played a lot of hockey, not only played it, but played it very well. First of all, thanks for taking time out yeah. here. And, 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 and maybe we can first talk about uh, the opportunity that you have because you're, you're rising in the, yeah. in the movie world. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I started acting uh, just under four years ago, and uh, so recently I've been given a great opportunity with a uh, major uh, Netflix superhero TV show called The Jupiter's Legacy. And uh, so we, we're excited for, uh, it's going to release around this time next year. And uh, everything is looking great from the whole production straight down. So very excited for it and uh, can't wait for the audience to see it. All right, Chow, we're here to talk about hockey. And yeah. uh, in right. your day, back in the day, you're 31 years of age, mm -hmm. as I mentioned. But back in the day, you were one of the elite players in the province of Nova Scotia. Yeah. Maybe we, we start by going back there and just how important the game was to you at that age. Oh, I think when you are 8, 9, 10 years old, you start to develop a certain identity. And I think you're, you know, especially competitive hockey and being in a place like, you know, Nova Scotia and, and Canada in general, hockey really is your world. You fully identify with it. Your everything is based on it. Mm. It, it even gets to the point where you think that, you know, your parents may like you more, like you less, depending on how you do on the ice. After every game, you know, the, the comment you get from your dad or your mom on the way to the car on the way home, these things mean a lot when you're only 10 or 11 or 12. And you just think your whole world is built on that. And even now we're all we're 20 years later, a lot of these things still resonate with me. So hockey is, I wouldn't even say was a big part. If, if it wasn't majority of our lives or what we identify with, I can't really think of anything else. Oh, as you got older, you started to become a little concerned about your dream. Yeah. And... Yeah. Things perhaps started to fall apart a bit. Yeah. Um, so when I played Adam Triple I was, I would say I was around my prime. You know, people say they peaked at a certain age. I think around Adam Pee Wee, I was very good. And I obviously, I think size play a factor. I was a bit bigger than most of the other kids. But at the same time, I think um, uh, I had... I think my mental game was just very, very weak when it got a little bit, when I got older. It, it was almost like if I wasn't the best player, I'd rather not play. So I also had a knee injury around 13 years old. So for Pee Wee second year, I sat out basically the whole year. And then when I came back to Bantam next year, I was still among the one of the better players. But I was no longer dominant or elite. I was probably the top, you know, still the, one of the best players on my team. But I was no longer that dominant player who could take the puck from one end and just do whatever he wanted. I was still scored a lot of goals, but it was it was just night and day difference. And you know, I remember transitioning from grade uh, grade ten to grade eleven. I went from Charles P. Allen to Sir John A. and I um, I had gotten um, uh, beyond depressed. I started developing panic attacks, social phobia. Um, I got so nervous in public situations. And you just completely, at 14, 15 year old, years old, you completely lose your identity. And it got to the point where so many times throughout the day, I would be feeling just, you felt like your heart was racing at 100 beats per minute. And it was incredible. And you were just always so nervous. And you were so insecure. When were you at rock bottom? Uh, I would say um, it was my, a lot of people don't know this, but my first year playing for Halifax McDonald's, um, basically for six months of the year, every, um, before every single practice, uh, my mom took me to see a psychologist right in Halifax, right outside the Halifax uh, Civic, yeah, and it was literally down the street, and I obviously kept it quiet for many years, but um, I would say it was, you know, I was not well mentally and emotionally, and um but I, you know, I was playing Halifax McDonald as a second year, I guess. And, but I would say, yeah, rock bottom was definitely then. There was many times when waking up in the morning, you just felt, you just wanted the day to pass. You almost, you know, you wanted to sleep so that you could just, you know, not that you were looking forward to the next day, but you just wanted the day to end and you don't want the next day to come. And it was a very dark time and it was a good six months. It was like that. Yes. Yeah. Number one is very gullible. I was very naive. And, um... You know, and I think I allowed so many people, um, and I love my parents to death. You know, I think they, they do so much for me, but even the people that are closest to you, you know, the hockey coaches that you respect, or your parents, everyone, people that you think know what the world is about, 
one of the big things that I really want to spread the word is that you can never allow somebody to tell you, whether when you are 14, 15, 16, 20, 25, 30, whatever age, of who like who you're going to be or what career path is suitable for you or even telling you that this is not achievable for you. And I cannot be, you know, begin to tell you how often when you're 14, 15 years old and you have a hot and you've only been playing hockey for the last 10 years mm-hmm. and you have a hockey coach tell you that this is your potential. You know, does he have the magic ball? Does he is he a does he somebody who can read the future? How is he to tell you? And I I I don't think it was one or two examples. I was probably given a, so many dozen of examples of that, and it really it really discourages you mentally, and it just it just rips motivation from you, you know. So I would say that's the biggest message is no matter. And I kind of feel like now I'm older. I'm a bit older now, and to kind of finally realize that at the older age that you know your future, your career, your life really is in your hands. It's not in anybody else's hands, and no matter how young, I think. We should never give the right to let somebody to tell us at no matter age, this is who you're going to become or this is where your future lays. And, and, I, and I do feel I, I did waste, um, you know, a good five, seven, eight years on just people telling me who I was, you know, and, um, you know, thankfully I figured out yeah. sooner and later.